Hello everyone, my name is Florent Farge and I'm a professional artist working and living in France. This video is a crash course for complete beginners. It will help you get started today and create great art tomorrow. What stops most people is doubt. They anticipate the problem so much that they actually get discouraged before they even have a chance to start. In this video, I want to show you that every difficulty that you might face as a beginner has a simple solution. And I'll try to give you all the keys so that you can start and paint with confidence. So the structure of this video is not going to be step one, step two, step three, etc. It's mostly going to be about following questions and issues that people have raised in the comments section or have written to me via email or anything else, things that I've seen and read. I will just try to pick up the problems that have been raised by the community and come up with simple solutions. One difficulty equals one solution. Oil painting requires so much material, I don't even know how to get started. All right, so this first beginner issue is quite easy to fix. I have a list, a PDF document listing all the material one might need to start oil painting and even explore more advanced techniques and materials. It's up to you to see and decide if you want to get them. It's a link that's going to lead you on my website. There is no subscription. You don't have to pay anything. It's just a a free PDF that I've made for students of my workshops. So download it and, and use it and enjoy it. I don't even know how to start. I just feel too intimidated. Actually, this entire video is all about solving this issue. And if at the end of the video, you feel more confident and you feel that you can give oil painting a try, I'll consider myself happy. To illustrate what I'm going to be talking about in this video, I'm going to be showing a demonstration of the most simple subject that I can think of, a white sphere. No cutter, no complicated techniques to understand, just a monochromatic black and white painting of a sphere. Actually, it does look very simple at first, and it is a very simple subject, but uh, actually painting it is, is a little bit more tricky than it looks because it's very soft and round, so you need a lot of precision and softness in your brushwork, so it's a great exercise to start with. If you maybe think that it's too easy, I have a lot of other tutorials on my channel, so you can go there just afterwards. The point of this video is not actually the painting of the sphere, it's sort of irrelevant at this point, it's just going to be used as an illustration. The point of this video is to overcome the difficulties that beginners face when they start painting. For this demonstration I'm using a dozen small brushes of various shapes and sizes, rounds, filberts and flats. I use synthetic and hog bristles and also a sable. Again, you'll find all the details in the PDF linked in the description. I have only three pigments, ivory black, raw umber and titanium white. One last thing, I'm using what is called a pochade box vertically so that you can see the canvas and the palette next to each other. You absolutely don't have to use this setup, it's only something that I've used so that you can see the palette and the canvas next to each other. But actually for a beginner just use a normal easel and a normal palette, either a wooden palette that you can hold in your arm or a glass palette that you can have on the table and that's quite easy to clean and this is what I prefer using actually. Before we go any further, know that if you want to explore more techniques about oil painting and really bring it to the next level, I've made a course on oil painting, the practical guide to oil painting techniques and materials, a six hour course focused on techniques. This course covers everything you need to know about oil painting. It's pretty technical, but it covers all the aspects of oil painting, including plein air, solvent-free techniques, and water mixable oil paint. This guide is as clear and complete as possible and is good for every skill level. It comes with a two hours painting demonstration where you can see everything there is to know about the painting process and all the things that I do on the side, which is quite unique, like organizing the palette, preparing the colors, or even cleaning up the brushes. If you're a beginner and you don't know where to start, I'm really confident that this course has everything you need to know. 
It has a rating of 4.9 out of 5. I'm very proud of it. And if you want to learn more about repainting, this is definitely the course for you. All right, let's move on. I drew my outline on the canvas, but then the paint removed everything. If you make your drawing on your canvas before you paint, you might want to use graphite, which is good. But graphite is a delicate powder and the paint is a fluid. And fluid versus powder, fluid always wins. To avoid losing your outline, you can either use drawing fixative before painting to make sure that your lines won't smudge or do as I do in this demonstration, use colored pencils. Colored pencils generally contain a binder which makes them harder to erase, but it will not get washed away by the paint. Are medium optionals? Sorry if it's the stupid question. I often see this question and no, it's definitely not a stupid question. It's actually a key question and there is a lot of confusion surrounding it. So let's, let's talk about it. What does a medium do? All right, let me show you. I'm going to paint a brush stroke for the black background with no medium. The paint is ivory black straight from the tube. You can see that without medium, I get two or three strokes before the brush starts feeling very dry. It doesn't flow very well, it becomes sticky very fast. Well, a medium is a fluid that a painter can use to increase the fluidity of the paint and facilitate the flow of the brush strokes. Let me show you. I'm just adding one or two drops of medium to my ivory black. I do that on the side because I can't do that on my vertical palette. That's why I don't recommend that you paint with this setup like this. Like I said before, it's only for the purpose of this demonstration. So the medium is like using water with gouache or acrylics, except that we have to use something different. What is a medium? What should you use? There are many, many options for mediums. And instead of reviewing everything like I do in my course, I want to help you understand what a basic fundamental medium is composed of. A medium is mainly composed of a binder and a solvent. The binder is a drying oil which is going to harden after a certain amount of time and keep the paint film stable over time. Without binder, paint would just be powder, like you would just blow in, disappear. The other part of the medium is the solvent or thinner or diluent. This is a fluid that works like water for gouache. By that, I mean that it evaporates after a few hours. Unlike the oil, the solvent part of the medium will not stay in the paint film and it will evaporate. Because on one side the oil affects the paint film and on the other side the solvent doesn't stay in the paint film, it is said that the oil is fat and the solvent is lean. Generally, you want a good balance between lean and fat. You don't want pure oil because it's going to take way too long to dry and can cause issues. And you don't want lean because if you have too much solvent and not enough binder, the pigments will be too diluted and they will not stay in place in the paint film properly. The general rule with oil painting is to paint fat over lean. You've probably heard about this. It means that when you let multiple layers dry and you paint layers on top of each other, each new layer needs to have a little bit more fat, more oil than the previous layer. To do that, simply you take your medium and you add a few drops of oil every time you start a new layer wet on dry. So what should you use? I suggest to use a medium that is one third linseed oil and two thirds eau de last mineral spirits. Something like Sensodor or Gamsol or anything like this, eau de last mineral spirits is going to work great. If you don't want to prepare it yourself, you can also use what is called an alkyd medium like Liquin or Galkid. To keep things simple, are mediums optional? Because this was the question. In theory, yes. If you don't want to use any medium and if you like the consistency of the paint straight out of the tube, you don't have to use medium. In practice, it's hard to go without any medium, actually, 
because when you want to paint multiple layers and when you just want a little bit more fluidity for your paint, simply add a few drops of oil to your medium every time you want to start a new layer wet on dry. That's the very basic level, but of course there are way more complicated things you can do with mediums, using resins, using dryers. You can check out other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about this. The problem with oil is that it takes a month to do a painting that you could do in one hour with the acrylics. That problem, to be honest, is not really a problem, it's actually an advantage. If you're in a hurry and just want to paint quick sketches, then sure, maybe watercolor is better for you. Acrylics, not even sure. They're pretty slow in terms of setup and cleanup. They dry fast, but fast drying for a painting technique is not always a great thing. If you want to paint figuratively, by that I mean represent things things that actually look like things, like people, animals and stuff like this, oil painting is going to be a great medium for that because it gives you just more time to focus on your subject. If you want to paint something that looks like something that exists, like a cat, a face, a human figure or a landscape, then slow drying time is actually a benefit. Think about this, if you want to paint a portrait, do you really think that you would do better in an hour or in a month? Slow drying time simply gives you more time to paint, to improve your subject, to make all the corrections that you need to make and push it to a higher degree of refinement. As you'll start painting, you'll realize that it's not just about filling in the empty areas like in the coloring book, it's about more than this. A paint is, is a fluid mess, actually, that you have to control, so you have to make a lot of corrections, work on the edges, improve the brush strokes, and you need a lot of time for that. So this slow drying time is actually a great help if you want to achieve that. It does take a long time to work like that, but it's also why oil painting is so dynamic and beautiful. Oil paint naturally has a slow drying time, but a lot of products can change this. Alkyd mediums speed up the drying time while bringing fluidity and transparency, and they can be useful if you need fast drying time. I also have a complete video on drying time, and I'll put a link so that you can check it out if you're interested. I've never tried oils, but I've heard that they usually have an odor. Is that really true? Not really, no, the oil paint doesn't smell that much. If you're really up close, you can smell something, but really, the oil itself smells like something you can put in your salad. What smells is actually the solvents, the thinners, like turpentine or essence of spiked lavender. This is what actually smells in oil painting. This is why I recommend using odorless mineral spirits as a thinner. I can't paint with oil because it's not safe. This is a problem that's holding a lot of people back and I've always tried my best to make oil painting safe and easy for everyone. I've made a complete video on oil painting and safety and I really recommend that you watch this video. Basically oil paint itself is not toxic. A basic paint tube only contains oil and pigments, it doesn't smell and it will cause no harm as long as you don't ingest some of it. Safety issues mainly come from the solvents used to thin the paint down or clean the brushes like turpentine or mineral spirits. These solvents evaporate and create fumes that can eventually be harmful if inhaled. This is why you should always paint in a well-ventilated room. But even in terms of toxicity, Paint solvents, like odorless mineral spirits, are actually pretty safe as long as they are used with proper precautions. When you compare painting with drinking alcohol, cleaning your house with detergents, or spraying perfume around your neck, it's hard to say really what is the most toxic thing. Seriously, compared to alcohol consumption, oil painting is pretty safe. Also know that painting solvents like mineral spirits are not known to cause cancer, so that's a good thing. To prevent all risks, solvents and mediums should be used with moderation and all containers should be kept shut as much as possible. 
For medium, I use little dropper bottles with flip tops. This way it doesn't stay open. You don't need to have a big jar of mineral spirits open or a huge bucket of it, of white spirit at the bottom of your easel to just beat the devil out of your, out of your brush. It's pretty fun, but like if you're not in a well-ventilated studio, it's just fumes going up just for no reason. You can keep it shut and open it only when you need. Many people think that they have to use a solvent to clean their brushes like people would do with water cutter. But it's not true. You can use a slow drying oil to clean your brushes or you can just wipe the paint out with some paper towel or with a rag. If you really want to clean your brushes with solvent, you should get an airtight jar with a piece of material that can be used as a filter. Of course, it's not as easy to clean your brushes with mineral spirits as it is with water for acrylics, but if you're really worried, know that you can choose water mixable oil paint and with these, water can be used to replace the traditional solvents. Finally, if you want to avoid solvents and use only oil, there is an oil painting technique that's great for that. It's called the Ada Prima approach. It means that the entire painting is made in one layer, wet on wet. With this approach, you don't need solvents and like Claude Monet, you can only use a few drops of oil when you need the paint to be a little bit more fluid. And that's it, not only is the Ada Prima a great way to paint, it's safe and intuitive and really it's pretty fun. To conclude on the subject of toxicity, just know that with the right knowledge, it's pretty easy to get rid of the harmful materials. And if you use everything sparingly, uh, really you can paint safely every day with no problem at all. Keep in mind that I always suggest to keep your studio clean, organized and well ventilated. I spent a lot of money on some basic oil painting supplies, but got discouraged because all of my paintings turned out so flat and muddy. When your paintings turn out muddy is generally because of a problem with values. In art, value is a term used to talk about the degree of luminosity of a cutter from the darkest to the lightest. Value is one of the three dimensions of cutter. The other two are hue, like red, yellow, green, purple, orange, etc. And chroma, sometimes called saturation the degree of purity or intensity of a color compared to a neutral gray. Out of the three, value is the most fundamental. Like the skeleton for the entire body, it's what's holding everything together. The proof is that a black and white picture makes perfect sense, but a picture with only hue or only chroma and no value would just be a chaotic mess impossible to understand. My suggestion if you struggle with color and if you feel that you don't control the paint is to proceed step by step. First, learn how to control the paint with monochromatic subjects like this sphere or black and white images in general. I can't keep the shapes in place where I have my outline traced, it gets so messy. This next difficulty is also a good reason why you might want to start with simple, basic, monochromatic exercises in the very beginning. With only one goal in mind, understand how to handle paint and keep it under control. Work with simple black and white subjects until you can understand how to preserve the shapes with your brushes. The thing is, you don't preserve them, you brush them away from one side and from the other side. Every time you put a brush stroke on the canvas, it pushes the paint around on one side or on the other. If you had an outline to follow, you will quickly lose track of it. Once the line is covered, you can't see it anymore and you might be slightly off compared to your initial drawing. A brush is not as precise as a pencil. Get used to this idea, you will lose your lines, all of them. But it's actually a good thing, welcome to painting. With paint, you need to convert lines into edges. Instead of thinking about demarcations, think about colliding edges. This is how you maintain your outline, by converting it into edges. 
you paint on one side, it goes too far, you paint on the other side, it goes too far, you paint again and you refine a little bit and you go on the other side again, etc. until you get exactly the type of edge that you desire. Next, you'll understand how to make the edge sharp or soft and how to really bring character and give it a very realistic appearance. Once you get this, you will have no regret abandoning the lines and converting into edges because edges look a lot more realistic and they are really a part of painting, whereas lines are not a part of the painting experience. Lines are specifically for drawing, but once you start painting, you sort of have to move on to something else. How did you achieve that? I could never do that. I would like to finish with this issue, which is a recurring thing that I often get in my tutorials. It's basically, I try to make things as simple as possible for people and I do a demonstration, which is usually a subject like this, which is kind of complicated. And people often like thank me for the tutorial, thank me for the content, but say at the end, I could never do that. At the end, they compare the result of my demonstration to their skill level and immediately demean themselves by implying that they could never achieve that. For this video, I intentionally chose to paint a very, very simple sphere, so I don't think I'll receive those comments here, but I see a lot of those in my other tutorials. Basically, people like the tutorials but insist on comparing their current skill level to what I'm painting in the demonstration. First, let me tell you one thing. I've been painting day and night for years to reach this level. And honestly, I believe in you. Not in you because I don't know you personally, but I believe in the human ability to learn and grow and improve. And I know that with dedication and hard work, there is nothing that you can't achieve. If there's just one thing that I'm certain about is that with hard work and dedication, you can improve your skills tremendously. Some people say, well, it's easy for you to say you're talented, it's unfair, blah, blah, blah. That's excuses. Talent is just, it's just a freebie in the beginning. Imagine that you have to cycle up a huge hill. The tan part in this analogy is just a slight push in the beginning. If you don't put in the work, it will never be enough to get up there. Talent is simply an ability that makes hard work more bearable. When I try to make oil painting easy in my videos, we have to understand what we are talking about. Is oil painting easy? Yes, it is. If you want to paint easy things and if you take it easy and don't put pressure on your shoulders. My videos are not made so that you get to paint like me, but so that you get to paint like yourself. Is reaching the same level as a professional artist easy? Hell no! It's tremendously difficult. You will have to paint day and night to get there. And that's, that's how things go for everything, basically. And my tutorials are not made to teach you that, they're only made to help you understand what the difficulties are and how to overcome that so that you can start today with confidence. I'm just trying to give you the slight push in the beginning and after that it's up to you to climb up there. Really, ultimately, believe in yourself. Just paint, think later. Just give yourself a chance. If you put your heart into it, anything is possible. Again, thank you very much for watching. A huge thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. If you want to join the Patreon, you'll find the links in the description. Patrons have access to exclusive content, real-time videos, demonstration behind the scenes. As I've already mentioned, you can also check out my oil painting course. You'll also find a link in the description. This course can really bring you to the next stage and help you improve tremendously. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you for the next one. And until then, have fun painting. Bye.